and good morning and welcome to another Firefic live craft and chat if you are watching the replay please remember that i come back to the comments so jump in join the conversation and i'll come back and answer any questions or just laugh along at the dumbness that is me um it has been a technical glitch after technical glitch after technical glitch i don't even know how many times i rebooted this morning but i've had to reset up cameras get different microphones just it's just been a weird morning and everything was perfect the other day i was using this entire setup like the day before yesterday for another thing and it all worked fine so i don't know what the problem is anyway we're here so hopefully you can hear me and you can see me and i will calm down and i will tell you something really really funny well funny to me i've already said all this once because i actually forgot to hit the go live button about two minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah my mic sounds different it's a different mic that is why hopefully you can still hear everything okay um yeah i'm just plugged in i just like reset everything up like a wizard like as fast as i possibly could so um unfortunately i am using the lav mic which means that you will probably get to hear all my rattly breathing which is why i don't use the lav mic anymore because you know my breathing is bad um there is something I need your help with, okay? So there was two selections that either of them could have been the lav mic. So what I'm going to do is I need your help to, to help me get the right one. So we're going to call this lav mic one, and you tell me which one sounds better, okay? So we're currently on lav mic one, and I'm about to change over to lav mic two. So let me know in the comments if you prefer one or if you prefer two. It feels like an optometrist appointment. Is one better or two better? So are we ready? We're going to change over the audio to the other mic. Oh, hang on a sec. Oh, hang on. It helps if I choose mic rather than speakers, right? Gives me more options. Okay. Are we ready? Ready to see. And how is that one? Is that one better or is that one worse? So let me know. Can't we prefer them all? No. <laughs> I need a yes or no answer. Which one is clearer? One or two? That's right. We are now on two. I was on one before and now I'm on two. So number two sucks. Okay, let's go in and put it back to number one. Okay, we've gone back to number one. All righty. Thanks, guys. I thought I had the right one, but I just wasn't sure. I just wasn't sure. Oh, my goodness. I thought everything was all set up. I was inside making cuppers. You know, yeah, today I'm onto the onto the, my throat's been a bit sore, so I'm onto the uh, the herbal today. Okay, so how's your week been? Have you had a great week? I had a fantastic week up until I got an email from my accountant going, "Hey, guess what? You need to do your tax this week." And I'm just like, "Wait, what now?" So yeah, that's what I did yesterday and the day before. Business tax, woohoo, exciting. Run a small business, they said. It's fun, they said. Oh, no, it's really not. Okay. Jackie prefers two. Okay. Um, good morning, Meg, Megquin. Megquin, good morning. Welcome to the chat. Number one is louder but a hollow sounding, but you are in a shed. I am in a shed. The other microphone was much better at, you know, making things sound good. Oh, yeah, John, you got your Amical blanket kit from Iceland to the US in six days. Are you guys, yeah, it's been insane. There's John and Twilight Jacket they had an earthquake down in Victoria. And it also was felt in New South Wales. It was so weird. Um. So, Lizby, you have missed nothing. I was late and I've had technical glitch after technical glitch. So welcome to live streaming uh, where the whole thing can crash and burn three minutes before you're due to go live. Way! Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, so um, <laughs> Freaky Geek says no later than our hostess here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um Number one is hollow sounding. Okay. Um, I'm going to have a little look. I might have a third option. I'll have a look. Let's see what we've got here. Um, uh, 
Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. No, I really think I've only got those two. Um, I can, I'm can. i going to try a third one, all right? You guys have to tell me. I have no idea what this one is. It's just got, like, random letters. Okay. All right, we ready? Yeah, number three didn't even work. So, you know, it's definitely not that one. The sticky tape, the mic to your cheek. <laughs> Pretend it's a headset. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right. We're just going to have to deal with the audio for today. I don't know what's going on with my other mic. I, I do know what's going on. Well, I think I know. I ran a firmware update but last week, like after live stream last week, and I've used the mic since. So I don't know. Lisby sat through a Craig Kelly ad. Who's Craig Kelly? I've no idea. You saw your lips move. Yeah, two again. Try two again. Really? We can't do three. We can lip read. It can be a competition. You guys will literally make up crap. Like seriously. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So this week. Like, aside from doing my exciting tax, oh, I forgot to bring out my bags. Um, I went on a sewing retreat over the weekend. I jumped in the car and I drove an hour and a half west, northwest, yeah, and I went on a sewing retreat and I made a clutch with a wooden handle. Um, did I Instagram it? Maybe I didn't even Instagram it. I could be the worst person on the planet. Hang on, not the worst person on the planet. Let me look. Nope, I didn't even Instagram it. So this afternoon, I'll go through and put the photos up <laughs> of this amazing Wonder Woman clutch that I made. It was so much fun. Southwest, not Northwest. Okay. It didn't feel south to me, but okay. Um, I storied it, not posted. Thank you, Kim. I thought I'd posted something, but yeah. Um, Oh, Lisby, I have got no political ads to running on my YouTube channel. So thank you for letting me know that. I'm going to go and check that because as, as a member of um, as a member of the YouTube Partner Program, I don't have much choice over the ads, but I can choose things that do or do not align with your brand. And I've specifically said no political ads. So if you guys spot a political ad on my YouTube channel, you need to let me know because it's like... The, one of the few things that I have not, that I've ticked no to. Um, it's posted on the Little Moo Designs page. Okay, so if you guys go and check out Little Moo Designs on Instagram, um, that will be there. Um, I'm hoping that photo of me in a dress is not there. I really did not like that photo. Um, I'm just checking. I'm just checking if that me. I don't think it is because I think I let, let her know. Um, probably the most unflattering photo of me that I've seen in part, probably the past. Oh, there's a photo of us all as a group. That one was fine. That one was okay. I could look at that one. Yeah, no, that's cool. There was a photo of just me, like by myself. We were all like posing and it was just terrible. It was a bad photo. Um, it is a nice dress. Um, yeah, we'd had, we had to all get dressed up like we would dress up at a, um, at a high tea. And as I don't really dress up much, like getting me out of trousers is fun. Um, I, I, I prefer wearing, you know, like a, a long sleeve t-shirt and long pants. That's, that's, that's my go-to, but I put a dress on for this. I joined in the fun. Um, I had so much fun. It was a bit nerve-wracking because I learned some new things. I'd never sewn with leather before. I'd done some vinyl but not leather. So my sewing machine can sew through leather. So, yay, that's good to know. Um, and, yeah, there was just lots of layers and there was some, like, weird shapes I had to sew. And I didn't do – let's just say it's not perfect, okay? But I'm really, I'm really happy. I'm really happy with it, with the bag. And I, it's usable so far. Um, and I think it's cute. So, you know, and then we also did this other bag, which is just this vinyl pouch 
and I put some Wonder Woman fabric on that as well. And that was super cute as well. So I'll get photos of that up too. The other thing that I've done crafty wise is were you here last week when I had my little tanty over that terrible pattern? I don't know if you can hear my neighbor has does not like his car engine for some reason is just revving the life out of it just next door just, oh. i'm really enjoying it he's been doing it now for about four days it's fantastic i really look forward to it all of the time um oh thank you guys you popped in little moves insta that is awesome um chaos creator says there's so many dodgy photos of me from the weekend i don't care anymore what look I'll be honest, one of them made me look like I had some sort of puppy face neck, like my head was this long and this wide and I just, it made me self-conscious. Like I'm used to the rest of me looking really big. That's how I look. But I'm used to my face looking like this, <laughs> not like whatever that was. So, yeah. Um, did I read right on Facebook that you made a six-page pattern down to two pages? Mm -hmm. I've made a six-page pattern down to half a page. Now, in saying that, I need to clarify something. So the six pages that was included in that other pattern, which I want to, you know, harp on about because I'm sure she's done a very good job and she obviously has a reason why she does things the way that she does. One of the pages was literally a quote. It was the whole patterns in landscape, which is another thing that just boggles my brain. Um, and one of the pages is just like a, a, a six-word quote with the person's name with bay, like cream behind it. So if you print it, that's a full-color print. So that ticked me off. So I was just like, nope. I've got no problems with having photos in, no issues at all. I have no problems about you putting in a little blurb about your business, but not if that takes up an entire page. There's no need for that. Not for a pattern. Nobody cares. They want the pattern. Um what was the other thing? Oh, they had some graphs, which I have not included in my pattern, um, but they had some graphs. Again, a, a little graph that could be this big took up an entire page and another one that, that is a graph of one row, again, takes up another entire page. So, yeah, that were things that bugged me. Anyway, so um, I, I haven't tested this camera since I rebooted, so it's probably dead now. Um, let's have a look. So I've made one. Now, I realised I buy little bars of soap, like, because I buy these little goat's milk soaps. And um, it's it's quite small compared to the bag. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it means that it'll fit those really big bars of soap in as well. So the pattern's out for testing at the moment. I actually want another human to look at it and tell me what I've screwed up because I'm sure I have. I'm not a pattern writer. Um, so, but I'm very happy with it. Look, I didn't weave in the little ends on the ends of the chains. I just trimmed them so they're even. Don't care too much. You do whatever you want. Um, but, yeah, so this is this is what I've ended up with with my half a page pattern, which will end up turning into a full page pattern because I will add a photo and I will add a little bit of branding, but I will not let it go over a, a single page for something this size. I bought sweater patterns that took up less pages than that other one. Anyway, I'm really happy with this. And this cotton, this was that, this was the, um, I've got it just here. So it was the dishy, but in the variegated, worsted weight. This is lovely to use. Like you guys remember when I opened the box and I was a bit like, meh, it's a bit firm. No, I don't know what drugs I was on. This is lovely to use. And I think it's going to turn into a gorgeous, like, you know, soap sack. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to come up with a name for my soap sack pattern. So, you know, it's currently called Chantel's Less Angry Soap Sack, um, <laughs> which I don't know if I want to call it that permanently. So we need to come up with a name. Um, John says, looks like a nice idea, but I don't have four bars of soap in my shower. We all share. Yeah. We have, like, me and Abby, like, because we have two bathrooms. Tim has one and Abby and I share the other. So Abby and I tend to, we, we tend to use a lot more, like, body wash and stuff. So we don't use a lot of soap. So, you know, but I, I, I've got a thing about sharing bars of soap. I, I don't I don't share bars of soap. Um, 
Yeah, Lisby loves that name. Chantel's less angry. <laughs> so bad. Soap sack. Hello, Louis. Can, I don't know. Hang on a second. I've got because Louis was so sad last week, right? I've brought him in. So he is he's there. I've brought him some toys. I gave him a big run around beforehand. He went for a walk this morning with Tim. Um, I have not set up a Louis cam, but if you guys want me to set up a Louis cam, I can um, I can definitely do that. Not today. Well, I mean, there's a camera there. I could just go and turn it. You know, we've got this one. Uh, where is this? Okay, warning, I have not tidied my desk, all right? Desk view, trash desk. Like, this is my box of sound gear, bolty sound gear. Uh, <laughs> like... Oh, you, hang on a second. Um, Chantel's soap sack, simple. I like that. But yeah, oh yeah, okay. So you guys can't see the rest of the mess. So that's there's a whole another section of the table there that's just totally just. It's got like you know all the stuff when I was doing the pattern and my tissues because I remember to bring tissues out. Um, but where's Louis? There's Louis. Louis having a schnuzzle. Um, simple soap sack sounds better. A Louis cam. How about wash away the day soap sack? Oh, wow, she put that on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Not a ball sack. I mean, I'm okay with that. Which one was Holly's? What about wash away the day soap sack? Yeah, Louis cam. A Louis cam. Look, it could be probably pretty easy to set up. I could probably just do it right now. I could do it right now. Let me just, I'm attached to the wire because I'm on my little thing. So I just need to swivel. Swivel the camera. Okay. All right. Now, I mean, this could show all sorts of mess. Let's see what it shows. Yeah, look at all the mess. Oh my goodness. Let's let's um let's unlock that and just like you know I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know how I feel about showing you all the mess. I like I've got to zoom in with it and that one I don't have set up for zooming. <laughs> oh goodness me. Um let's not show that again. All right, so the soap is making my, because I'm, you know, it's just goat's milk soap, but it's got, still got a scent to it. So it's still messing, still messing everything up. What mess? I just see a sleepy puppy. Oh, thank you, Freaky. I appreciate that. Mm. John O'Brien says Tibbles cam. Tibbles is outside, dude. He's out like being a cat. Grope the soap sack. <laughs> Can't say I don't like it. I definitely like that. Louis is definitely a cutie. Oh, I should possibly mute my phone. All the things that I would normally do before my live stream that I'm just like running around like a headless chicken trying to get them all done. Who is it? Oh, okay, just Telstra saying thanks for paying your bill. So why be sorry? That's awesome. I love it. Um. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I really do want the Louis cam sorted out. Um, that's the, but this is the, um, so let me think, spin cam. So unlock that. Uh, uh, which button unlock that? No, not that one. Uh, that one. Locks it so I can bring his little head over. There we go. It's not, it's because it's a webcam and it's quite far away from him. It's not the best quality. But you guys can see when he's being a cheeky possum now. Okay, so I've got this. Um, and I was tossing up. Yeah, you might as well do it, or you're gonna be distracted. Absolutely, see. You, you guys know me. You guys know me. Hang on, I just want to just tidy it up a bit. So let's just go alt and shrinky dink it down a little. 
just so your computer's not having to work quite so hard. There we go. All right. There he is. Sleeping. Hmm. That's now no longer the spin cam set up. <laughs> I set that up. That was my spinning camera. Um, it looks like a treat bag now. Look, it could be used for anything. Honestly, it doesn't have to be used for soap. It could be used for anything that you want to see a little bit through. Um, I wanted to have a go with like doing some crisscross over it instead of just the straight lines. I think I would prefer that. Um, leave the straight lines for the top because you need it, you're using it to sort of more weave the um, the chains in and out to shut the bag up so that you can reopen it to pop in the next bit of soap. Um, I love that it's machine washable, so that's easy. Um, yeah, John's blanket, how's the band blanket going? Which blanket's the band blanket? Um, Louis can hear the postman. Um, so I'm not sure which one is the band blanket. It is a lovely, simple design. And that was why I, I, I looked at it when we were on Ravelry and I thought this would be awesome. And then the pattern was just not simple. Oh, the soap is doing my nose in something fierce, you guys. I should probably have thought about that. Oh, Bonnie's Celtic cable thread. Where are you going, Louie? Seriously? You just walked out of shot. I was going to the other side of the couch. <laughs> He's like, it's, it's, hang on, he's over here now. Hey, what are you doing there? You don't like being on camera? you got your angry eyes on. Okay, whatevs. Okay, so, yeah. Bonnie's, okay, the Celtic. How much longer have you got on your Facebook band, John? So you could probably put potpourri in the soap sack. You'd have to put it inside some sort of mesh bag first, like in like an organza bag inside the soap sack. But you could totes do that. You could totes do that. Don't work with kids and animals. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All righty. So what I've done is I've brought in more of the cotton so we could have another go with that if we wanted. Or I've got my basket of spindles, but I have just trashed my spindle camera. So it would just be a top-down view of the spindles. Um, so you need to let me know what you would prefer, more crochet or some spindling. I've left my queen inside. It's a bit warm out here this morning and my hands are a bit hot, so I didn't want to work on the queen. Um, 18 more days, John. <sighs> wow. Okay. Yeah, they told him what he did. He knows what he did. I don't think it deserved jail, honestly, at Facebook prison. But he knows what he did. Melissa is voting. So who else is voting? Crochet or spindles? Spindles are all over there. and I'm going to have to. I didn't plan that very well. I'm going to have to de-mic and go and get it. So I'll have to mute my mic. Um, yeah. <laughs> spindles. All right, I'm going to go and get the spindles. Hang on. I'll, I'm just going to pop it on to, like, a, I need to mute this. So I'll just go to be right back, all right? Just going to get my spindles. Okay, I've got spindles. I brought over my whole spindle basket that I have out here. See? Spindle basket of spindle goodness. We've got some empty spindles that I haven't started a project on yet. We've got a ply on the fly spindle, which I won't do on camera, just because it's, it's one I prefer doing standing up. So 
Melissa's got her Rolex from 11 Windmills. Nice. Um, Lisa says crochet. We'll go, we'll go back to crochet as well, Lisa. Um, uh, Melissa wants to know how to start again. Okay. Yeah, Lisby, I agree. It was a legit answer. Okay. All right. So, um, so we'll get some fluff and we'll show Melissa how to start again. Where's the end of my purple? There we go. Is that the end or is that the other end? That's the end. Because then I've got like a little mini and all sorts of stuff. There we go. I'll put you to the side. All right. So Lizby wants to see, not Lizby, Melissa wants to see how to start it again. All right. So now I'm going to preface this with how I preface everything. This is how I do it. Okay. It doesn't mean it's the only way. It doesn't even mean it's the best way, but it is a way that works for me, okay? And I don't like doing the cheetah leader, okay? So if you don't know what a cheetah leader is, it's where you just get a piece of commercial yarn or yarn that's already spun and loop it onto here and treat that as your first leader. Um, so it's, it's you can totally do that. That's a way to do it. Uh, a couple of slip knots, I think, on each end is all you need. Um I personally not a fan, but it's your spinning. So you get to do whatever you want to do. Um, so I'm going to not do that because it's not how I like to do it. All right. Um, I'm just having a look. There is Chantelle is stealing my fluff. That's my fluff. Thanks. I've had that fluff for a really long time, actually. I should probably finish using it. Um, so, yeah, I agree with everybody's comments about John's Facebook prison. Like, it's it's legit dumb. Um, freaky geek, it is totally fine for you to do the cheetah leader. Like, that's what I'm just saying. It's If you want to do it that way, you totally can, and it's a legitimate way to do it. It's just not how I do it. I'm, I'm more of a, like, a stab at an ad twist and do it the hard way kind of person. So, like anything, you've got to choose which way you're going to spin and remember it because otherwise you're going to make your own life hard later. Okay. And stab through a bit of fluff and now I pinch that and hold on to it and that's why I had to restart it because I actually let go of it and I just give it a bit of twist get a bit of strength going in it all right because fluff is not strong until it has twist so this is slow going at the start but you can see the twist is building up and what we want to do is make a leader that's long enough to go from the bottom of the spindle. So if you've got a longer shaft on your spindle, you need to make a longer leader. Oops, did I just, I did. I spun it the wrong way and unspun all my work. That's okay. I'll just put it all back here. All right. Is that long enough? Yeah, I'll just add a bit more twist, a bit more strength. And then go in and just do a half. Yeah. I probably didn't have quite enough to do two wraps, so I need to do a little bit more. Now, how I'm remembering which way I went is I think of it a bit differently, okay? I don't think clockwise, anti-clockwise like a lot of people. I think push or pull, and that's how I think of it, okay? Um, 
and whatever works for you. If you think clockwise and anti-clockwise and that works for you, then do that. But I that doesn't seem to work for me. I always forget which way I've gone. But if I think pushing or pulling, then I remember for right now I am pushing. I'm pushing. I had to think about it for a second there because I kept saying it. All right. And that's how I started off. Chintami says left or right works for her. Awesome. All right. Now, because I do have that only precariously on there, it was just enough. I want to go over two and under one, over two and under one. And you want to keep doing that until you run out of fluff. Now, my fluff is here, so I don't think there's enough to go over two and under one and then be able to do a clove hitch. There's not. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and then I forgot that I had I forgot that I had the microphone here and sneezed right into it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry if you've been deafened. Okay. Now that's the hard part done. Okay. And now it's just push and just draft. Thank you guys. And push and draft. I let the twist travel. And the, the finer you make your yarn, the more twist you're going to need to give it the strength it needs to not be all snappy. Get out of there, free road placements. Okay, now, normally I would keep going, but I have reached the limit of the space between my camera and the desk. So I'll pause. I, I stab myself in the stomach like you guys can't see it, but I literally like come in and stab like stab that right there and it just gives me a good purchase on it um let me see if i can just swing this just i do try to keep my stomach out of the shot not today okay so i literally just rest it just more stomach there we go i rest it there okay then i push off the clove i get my thumb in under there i push off the clove hitch over two under one, over two, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one, and just keep doing that until you've got lines back up with the tip of the shaft again onto your next little bit of spinning. Not comfortable with that camera angle, so I'll fix that. Um, sneezing surround sound, sorry. Thank you, Chintamini. I'm liking my nails too. Start again and keep your hands in frame this time. Really? Did you guys miss everything? Do I have to start all over again? I'm not going to show fly on the fly. I need more room for that. I need more space. And this little tiny box that we have just here is just not enough. Um, do you guys need me to show how to start again? Because I was not, it wasn't on camera enough. I was watching my hands. I wasn't watching where it was fitting. Let me see if I can just zoom this out just a little. <laughs> you guys can see all my mess. I'll just smooth the mess. My little, what I've been getting done each week in Notepad. There we go. Give us a bit more room. Um, oh, Twilight Dagger says it was fine. Um, but you had all of the universe. What's more space do you need? Yeah, well, sometimes more. Freaky. All right. So do you guys want me to redo the start or do you want me just to keep going? Because it's, you know, let me know in the chat what you want me to do. Um, and that's what I'll do. And I'll have a sip of my drink here. I was so torn this morning. I really wanted my mint sliced tea. Um, but I decided that, you know, I needed my throat was a little sore and so I decided I didn't want that much sort of milky tea. Lisby does a cheat start. Whatever start works for you and gets you going, then that's what you need to use, okay? So I, I don't like to use the, the, the cheetah leader, but so many people teach that method and it is a really good way to get into it. But it, I don't know what it is. I don't know why I don't like it. It totally works. It legit works. 
Um, and so, uh, push. Um, but yeah, it legit works. There's no issues there, but it just, um, I don't know why I don't like to do it that way. It's, it's kind of like we all get taught different things and it sticks in your brain. It's like a friend of ours, um, like in the sewing group, does not like to machine sew her pockets closed, um, like the turning pocket, so the one that's done on the, like the last one, and she's, she's like on us about making sure that, that we hand sew them close as well. It's definitely a nicer finish, don't get me wrong. Um, but... I think it's just one of those things where uh, you get taught that it's the right way to do something and so in your brain it's the right way to do it um so oh my goodness i'm just gonna grab a tissue and just um go to puppy cam for a second and lean out of the shot <sighs> There you go, puppy cam with the messy floor and all the boxes. No, nope, we want that one. Okay, yes, it's personal preference. Absolutely, it's personal preference. And it's your spinning adventure. And just like crocheting and knitting and all the other yarn crafts and probably every other craft out there, um, it's your adventure and it's your journey and you do whatever way works for you. Now, if you're not happy with the outcome that you're getting, doing it the way that you want to do it, maybe then look at some of the other options. I've run out of room. I can hear it on the table. Um, yeah, probably should have muted. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yep. Next time I'll drop over to the bee right back. The soap smell has done my nose in and I'm all, like, stuffy now. So thanks, soap. And that's the soap I'm not allergic to. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, that's the thing. You've got to be happy with the end result. Um, so, and th that goes to for every project that you're working on. Are you happy with the process? Are you enjoying the process? And if you're not, then why are you doing it? And if you are not happy with the end result, why are you continuing on doing it that way if you could change the end result? And that's, I mean, that's life advice right there, isn't it? Yeah, Jackie's written here. And then if you're all good, if not, try something else until you are. Absolutely. So, and like everything I show you guys on this channel, this is just how I do stuff. This doesn't mean it's the only way. It's just the way I do it. And, like, sometimes it's because, like, I jokingly say I'm exceptionally lazy. I am exceptionally lazy. I don't like having to redo things. So um, I want to be able to do it right and get it right and do it once. And then if I want to do it again, it's because I want a second one of the whatever it is, not because I want to fix the one I've got. Um Twilight Dagger says it's the same with knitting needles and crochet hooks. It's all personal preference. Absolutely. Like, I personally love chow goo, but I know there's heaps of people out there that prefer knit pros or prefer other needle brands. Um, and that's 100% okay, unless it's like dodgy, cheap, nasty stuff that I'm just like, but really? But why do you like that? Is it just a cost thing or is there something good about it? Um, hey, oops, hey, Bob, how are you? Um, at least she didn't sound like a foghorn. There's that. Sorry, forgot that I'm wearing this mic and blocked my body, blocked my way from where my old mic sat, but not this one. Oh, goodness me. And you know what, Bob, I was late this morning too. We got started a little late today. Technical glitches so that's been fun sorry sucked into what I'm doing now um, so those of you that are in mystery lace club you will have received an email last was it last week 
or Monday. It feels like it would be last week. My brain is not doing well. I think it was last week. Um, so have a look in your inboxes. And it goes to the email that you signed up to the MLC on. So if you've got two separate emails, check both. Um, so it's the email address that you use for your PayPal payments. Last week, Jackie says, thank you. Um, I need to come back to this to learn how to spin. I have all the tools. I just haven't had the time or the brain power. I know those feels, Christina. What's the difference between your spindle and the one with a round top whirl? Um, just let me wind this off. And I've got a round top whirl one just right here, just off camera. So, um, like we were saying with the knitting needles and the crochet hooks and everything, it really comes down to personal preference. Um, I personally prefer these um, these Turkish spindles um, when it comes to sort of the drop spindle realm. Um, there's a round top one. This is a top whirl. Um, it just is a different place for the weight, really, um, and it's a different way that you um, weave on the yarn. So in my little basket of goodies here, I have a top whirl. I should have, here we go, I have a supported. Supported spindling is my preferred way of, of manual spindling. So uh, I've got this one here, just, I'll move, this is one we're working on, but I'll move this to the side. See how with this one here we create a sort of a, they, they're colloquially known as turtles. Do, do they have a proper name? Like does somebody know the legit name for the wound on section down the bottom? It's called a turtle because when you pull out these um, arms, it sits and looks a bit like a turtle shell, okay? So this one makes a turtle. The spindles, I could be wrong, okay? So if you guys um, know of something different, please let me know. But the spindles, you kind of just do like this where you're just winding it up and down. It doesn't create a standalone ball in any shape, fashion or form. So when you are applying off it, you've got to keep it either on the spindle or on another, like you could transfer it onto another spindle um, or, or stick or something for plying. You can't actually just pull it off and leave it there and hope it survives. It will um, tangle up and become a bit of a knotty mess. So while I love these, because like look at the look at the artistry in that. Seriously, how can you not love that? Like all that clockwork. Like Scott and his little laser cutter. This is a Scott Snyder spindle. Um, they he just does amazing work, right? So and that's why I got it. I got it because I like this. Um, and I wanted to try because I don't have a top well. Um that I'm comfortable, like I do have one, but it was a special gift and it's from like Spanish Peacock and it's worth an absolute fortune. So um, I, it's sort of more for pretty. <laughs> I don't use it. Um, and then, um, and then, but I wanted to do like, see what we've got on here is ply on the fly. So everything already on here is plied, whereas up here it's not plied. It's a different spindling technique that I've taught. I taught Chintami and a couple of other people. Um, but I totally learned it off YouTube. I did not invent it. Um, so there's tutorials out there. But I, I was playing with the ply on the fly because I teach it on a top well like this. But I wanted to do it on this and I worked out how to do it on a supported spindle, which you need help. On a supported spindle, you need to add a little pin or something because when you start spinning in the other direction, everything just flies off. Um, so it's 100% it's personal preference. The idea of either spinning wheels or, or spindles, all they do is add twist. They're fancy twisting sticks and spinning wheels are fancy twisting machines that load a bobbin. So um, it is, it's, all they're doing is adding twist to your fibre. That's their sole job. And so it is one of those things where what you use to twist it as long as you're getting yarn at the end of it that you're happy with, it doesn't matter which one you use. Slightly different techniques for each of them. Um, but at the end of the day, they all just add twist. I don't know if I answered your question or not. 
let me know. Um, Jancy says that she wraps paper tight around first to create a bobbin for the spindle. Okay, I've always had a problem with the yarn staying on it at the very start. It just keeps slipping. So, like, what do you do to solve that? Because I need to know that. Because that's a great idea. Create, like, a little, like, use a little bit of a post-it note or something just to slide it onto there to create the little bobbin or a little, you know, removable piece so that it's easier. Because that's one of the reasons why I don't use these. Plying off them is a pain in the butt. Um, so... And this spin girl says, I have a golding spindle. Oops, hang on. Too scared I drop it and break it. That's how I feel about the Spanish peacock one because it's oh, – do I have that here? No, I've got it inside. <laughs> Just looked at the dog. <laughs> he's, like, gotten comfy. He's put his head under the blanket and he's super comfy. <laughs> um. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like it's, and and that's one of the things I love about the Scott Snyder spindles, right? They are super pretty, right? And I would be sad if they got broken, but I'm not going to like be devastated because they are really good value. That that I I personally think he should be charging more for them for the amount of work that goes into them. But he's happy with his prices, so I'm happy to pay those prices. Um. So yeah, but. I'm okay, like, if I damage it or break it. The other advantage is if you break your shaft from Scott Snyder, you can measure it and he'll, you can buy a new shaft. You don't have to buy a whole new spindle. Um, if you break the arms, it's a bit harder because these have been balanced together. But if this guy gets, you know, and this for me, this is the part that breaks the most, is, like, if you drop it on the ground and it snaps or the little tip breaks off or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Freaky says that I've done Play on the Fly once or twice, been a while, so I've forgotten. Yep. Um, Christina says, pretty much what I thought. You answered it perfectly. I have a, a basic twisty stick, so I'll give it a whirl. Good job. Well done. Good joke. <laughs> uh, oh, hang on. I keep missing. Oh, no, there we go. I wasn't the right one. Uh, spin with a blocking mat on the floor below you. It will soften the fall. Yeah, I look, when I'm doing ply on the fly and stuff, I tend to do it up on the back of my yard. So it is hitting the ground rather than, like, concrete. So it is less likely to break, which is good. Um, but, yeah, it, it you know, we've got we've got options. We've got options to be less terrified of breaking our bad, our good ones. Chint Harmony, you travel with yours. You walk around doing it. So you're just brave. You're just brave. Most spindles are made for dropping, hence the name drop spindle. They're made to be dropped but not hit the ground. They're called drop spindles, not, not hitting spindles. So they're designed for you to twist and let go and for it to swing freely. It's not designed to be hit in the ground um, because they will break. They will definitely break. So, um, Leanne, welcome to the chat. Uh, if you want to learn to walk and spin, go to the beach, the sand will cushion the fall. That's actually a fantastic. That would be so fun. Like, can you imagine, like, a group of us chatting and walking and spindling up and down a beach? Like, that would be so weird, but fun. Like, weird for people watching it, not understanding how cool and fun making yarn is. So, hey, Game Widows, Pearly Shaw got her parcel from you today. So what, what? Um, oh. Did you guys see in the news this morning that apparently Star Trek, which um, is owned by Australia Post, they're going on strike. So, yeah, so frustrating. Um, Melissa, any tips for what? You need to, you, need to, you know, clarify that up. Chitama is like, we can group meeting anybody because we can. Like those of us that are local, we can go down to the Gold Coast and walk up and down a beach. It's Star Trek, T-R-A-K, not Star Trek, but, yeah. Um, so, Jackie, why, why, what? What are we whying? I don't know. Um, whoops. Uh, yeah, Star Trek. Um, 
They do. They want to be paid better. And from what I've heard from my delivery guys, which are not Star Trek, they're Ozpost delivery guys, but they are still subcontractors, they don't get paid great. And they quite often, um, oh, why Star Trek on strike? Yeah, they want better pay and better conditions, which, you know, like, do you blame them? They get paid like a pittance and Australia Post take all the money. So <laughs> Australia Post couldn't do a worse job with Star Trek than Paramount CBS has. Are you sure about that? Like, I reckon, I reckon, like, what is it that you don't like about what Paramount and CBS has done? Have you watched any Lower Decks yet, John? You've totally got to watch Lower Decks. That's so funny. Um, Melissa, which spindle are you using? Like, are you using a timber one or are you using a 3D printed one? Because the, the 3D printed, different spindles spin better. They're more aerodynamic. Um Oh, you like Lower Decks? That's good. Um, Ozpost is a bin fire these days. Absolutely it is. Um, it, it would be a close thing, yeah. Um, yeah, I like Lower Decks. Lower Decks is funny. It's so irreverent. Like, I'm so used to Star Trek being so, I suppose, like, even, sorry, guys, nerding out hard here. Um, even, like, Discovery has been a little bit less, like, like clean-cut image. Um the and and that's something that took me a little bit to adjust to when I first started watching Discovery um, was that it had it wasn't that clean cut image it was more warlike it was but it felt more um, like kind of what we're like like what people are like do you know what I mean it didn't seem so far in the future which is kind of the point I suppose but um, but yeah I definitely I'm I'm an old school like next generation girl that's what I grew up on. Um, okay, so Melissa, you're on your 3D spindle. Um, you're just going to have to flick it and flick it and flick and keep flicking. It is not as aerodynamic. It is a little bit more chunky. It's a little bit more solid. It's like this guy here. I'll just um, take that away. This guy here is he's adorable and he's so cute, but he's not super aerodynamic. Because he's got little, he's, he's a bit like me, okay? He's stubby and he's short and he's got little tiny arms and he's not super aerodynamic, okay? So it needs more flicking to get it to do what these guys do, which is why I do prefer the gliders from Snyder Spindles. The arms make it more aerodynamic. It spins faster. Um, and that's the thing. Different spindles have a different preferred spin speed that they hold um and you just got to keep playing but if it's your 3d printed one you're just going to have to spin and draft and spin you're going to have to just do it that often spin and draft and spin and draft it's just how it is it's just how it is um uh where are we chintam is giving some good advice there for melissa so that is good um yeah john uh, yeah there's a bit of that isn't there um game winner says the teeny tiny spindle really i found that he was hang on because this is a teeny tiny spindle it has been a while since i've used it though hang on I don't even know which way I'm spinning the yarn. No, he doesn't. Not compared to the gliders. He is a little slow, sluggy. Yeah, no, not compared to the gliders. Like he gets going, but then he slows down really quickly. See how fast that slowed down? So you get a good spin to start with, but then it slows right down really fast, right? Um. Hang on. I've just got to get some thread up here because, okay. And then these guys, the gliders, they, oops, hang on. I did not get a good purchase. So they get a good spin and just, oh, that's, hang on. That's my bad. That It couldn't spin anymore because it started coiling back in itself. But these guys will spin and spin and spin. 
oops, again, no, is come undone from the middle. There we go. And that'll just keep spinning until we're about to run out of twist room. So, yeah. Um, I think, you know, you can see why there's a difference. So... The Marger Craft is very slow. Yes, it is. It's good for learning on. It's excellent for learning on. Um, that's why there are specialist spindles for spinning cotton. Absolutely. The mini gliders are very fast. They are. This is just a standard Turkish. This is not a glider. The gliders have got these longer little arms. I love the gliders. They're my favourites, you guys. Um, can someone throw one of the mods? Can you throw in my Snyder Spindles link? That would be great. Um, but yeah, I would say out of the Scott Snyder spindles, my any of the gliders, whatever you prefer. Where's my green? Oh, I've got some in the house. I've got my new ones. They're not even here. My basket of goodness. Um, because I've got a green one, like that's got the green stripey stuff, which I love. Um, my big wool show yummies are here. I'm going to play now, but listening still awesome. I'm so glad they've arrived. Um, Freaky says it does take time to get the hang of it. Best to learn the park and draft before you draft while it spins. Yeah, Melissa's got it down and she got some good spinning going, but then she put it aside and did other craft. And now she's got to try and remember how to do it again. Um my daughter bought a cheap 3D printed Turkish thinking she'd probably hate it. She loves it. Awesome. That's good. And that's the other thing. Not all 3D Turkish printers, not all 3D printed spindles are created equal. Um, I was part of a Kickstarter for Scott Snyder and he did a 3D printed Turkish. It was a bit different, but it still worked. Definitely prefer the wood ones though. Um, Tarkleys for spinning cotton are amazing. Yes, they are. Absolutely. Um, Knit Spin Girl says my golding spins forever. Fantastic. Here we go. There's a Snyder Spindles link. So if you go and have a look, these ones here with these longer arms are the gliders. This is a medium. This is a small. There we go, like that. So, you know, it's not much smaller. It's a bit smaller. I like my spindles to be around that 30, 28 to 32 gram mark. That's a personal preference. This one here is 53 to give you an indication of the difference. 32, 53. So drop spindles are definitely heavier. The, oh, why would you want a lighter spindle versus a heavier spindle? Heavier spindles are good for making thicker yarns. Um, if you want to make a full ply or an A ply, get a heavier spindle. If you want to make a lot a lace weight or make lots of lace weight plies to turn into something thicker, go the lighter weight. So I, I mostly craft in yarn not heavier than four ply. So um Freaky says, not sure I have a medium. Well, you might have to look at that. Um, my first spindle was a top well bamboo spindle, lovely. And spin well, but I hate it. Tried a Turkish and fell in love. I retried the top well. Don't hate it, but still don't like it. That's where I match in Tommy. I learnt spindling on a bottom well. So bottom well, the, the, the hook's at the top, but the well's at the bottom. So this is definitely a top well because the hook's at the top. Uh, bottom wells are like this. And I learned to spin on a bottom well. And it was fine. It taught me the skills. But I moved over to actually over to... Um, over to these guys, the supported spindles. These are my these are my jam. This is my favorite. Is the supported spindles. So they spin forever. But yes, I like to spin supported. I've got personal rules with supported spindlings. Um, if I'm using a timber bowl. I don't like the ones that have the little metal nibs because they damage my timber bowls. And I don't buy cheap bowls. I normally buy the bowl from the spindle maker. So these, the bowls are like $40 or $60 as well. So, um, and because like I like all the different little the shapes and the different types of woods and 
and stuff like that. Well, there you go. This one was called Misty Bog and it was 60. And again, like, hang on, I just, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. That's the wrong hand. That's why. There we go. And it just keeps spinning and spinning here. It's sawing down now. But look what I've done. I've chipped the end off. Come on, little camera. See how it's the little end is a bit chipped off there? I'll have to give it a bit of a sand because I love this spindle. It's worth the repair. Um, where are we? Um, I have a medium. I'll try that. Definitely try your medium for sure. Chintamani says that she adores them and fly on the fly. Yep. Game Widows has a variety of spindles. Turkey should have favourites. Then the top worlds, then the supported, then the bottom worlds. The Scottish and the Andean are a bit niche. I've done some Scottish spinning. I've not done, I've done some Mayan spinning using the um, Ixchel Bunny's Mayan spinner. That's a bit of fun. Um, not Ixchel Bunny, sorry, Lair of the Dra Bearded Dragon, which is Ixchel Bunny's husband. Um, yeah, the Mayan spinner from Lair of the Bearded Dragon is fun to, to do. But yeah, Turkish, so for me, it's, Supported spindle, then Turkish, then top whirl, then bottom whirl. So um, Tarkley is at technically bottom whirls, so, but they're different. They're a different peddler fish. Um, Jackie says, watch a skater, a diver or a skater spin. They move their arms in and out to modify how they're spinning. They do. They do. Um, oh, there we go. Jackie's popped in a link for Lair of the Bearded Dragon. He also makes beautiful spindles, another Australian spindle maker. Well, sorry, he's an, he's Australian. Scott Snyder is in the US. Um, oh, no. Alison says, make sure the bowls are made from a hardwood. One I bought was too soft and the tip of the supported spindle was scratching up the wood. Uh, see, I've had that happen, but only when I have, I, I don't have the spindle anymore, but it was one of those ones that had the little metal nibs and it trashed my spindle bowl. And I don't, and I think it was the metal on the wood. I don't think it was hardwood versus, I mean, I don't even know now that you said it. I'm not hundred percent certain it was a hardwood. Um, but I think all the spindle bowls I get usually are hardwood. But I don't know. Um, this support spindle came from, uh, this is my black turkey. So I think this was a Malcolm Fielding. I don't know if he makes them anymore. But I also have a matching bowl for this one, but it's inside. Um, I have about 25 Actually, you know what? The crate with all my spindles is just right here. I'm going to get it. It's not all of them, but it's, it's most of them. Obviously, I care for them very much. <laughs> They're just in a box. Um, where are we? Uh, I've heard people suggest using ceramic bowls for support spindles with the metal tips. I would absolutely go and get one of those nice sort of little flat... Um, I, I get them from the $2 shops. They're like for resting your... Um, chopsticks on and things like that they're just sort of little half dishes so here's some more of my spindles um let me just check in this basket i think it's got some of my current projects in it oops 
more spindle balls. My T Rex. There's the rest of my T Rex. It's not there. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. And there's your shark. There we go. Okay. All right. So this is it. This is most of my spindles. Oh, that's it. The soy sauce sauces. That's it. They're like little flattish. They're very small, but they would do the job. Oh, there we go. Malcolm Fielding has retired, but his apprentice has a shop. That's cool. There we go. This is my top world that I don't use. So it's very special. So. Um, and this was a gift from a friend many years ago. I have a problem, okay? The problem is being bigger, having bigger legs. Sometimes when you rest your little bowl, like you say you're sitting on the couch. Actually, that's not my Malcolm Fielding. This is my Malcolm Fielding here. <clears throat> that one must be a Jim Leslie, I would say. That's my Malcolm Fielding because it's the dark wood. It's roomy. So... Yeah, that was my very first support spindle. And it's got some sort of camel and yak on it. Um, all right, let me just make this. Um, what I found that works really well with the old fashioned wide mill cup things on stands that I found in off shop. Awesome. Okay, so being bigger. <clears throat> these little bowls, when you rest them on your thigh, just slide right off. Because when I sit, my legs aren't flat. They kind of angle down and they just slide off. And with the pressure of like a spindle in there also pushing, they just push off. So a friend of mine <laughs> was watching me spin one day and for my birthday so many years ago, she sent me this. And this bit here sits between my very wide thighs and I spindle into the little egg cup and it's perfect so whenever I'm spinning on the couch this is my go-to bowl so it's like it's quite large so like the actual cup itself is quite small like but the actual length of it's quite long so this is a cool thing I have no idea where she got it from somewhere on Etsy is where she got it from okay but this is one of my pride and joy things um, I use it all the time. It's why it like sits on the top of the basket. Okay, this is a large glider, you guys. So this is, it might even be an extra, actually it's not a glider, is it? This is just a large Snyder spindle. I don't even think it's got its stuff written on it anymore. But that's just a large one. That's giant. And it's got a bit of weight to it. It's quite heavy. Um, so, yeah. This is the Scottish spindle. That we were talking about i can't say it i cannot say it um chilgen chilgen i don't know scottish spindle um i'm not i'm not a, it's hot like it's not my favorite i got it I got it actually from Scott Snyder. He's made, an, this was in his first batch. He's changed it up now. It's got a little lip so that it spins a bit better. But um, not my favourite. Not my favourite. Um, I have showed all this before, I believe. You're right. Um, freaky. Um, but we've got some new people. And, you know, we haven't played with it for ages. So, um, so yeah. So where are we? The stand of the cup sits between your thighs. Yeah, so this bit, like this just sits sort of wherever. It doesn't even always hit the couch, but this bit sits between my legs and then the cup sits wherever it needs to. Um, a bit of a lady who supports spindles while walking. She's a bowl rigged up on some sort of waist girdle belt thingy. Okay, wow. 
I didn't, I'm going to have to look for that now. If you find a link, chuck into the fun zone. That would be awesome. Um, oh, freaky. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I think I recognize it. Yep, yep. So, um, okay. So then we have, so I tend to lean towards more Russian spindles and, and more Tibetan shapes. So there's all different names for all the different shapes of spindles, okay, like tons, all right? So this is this is classed as a Tibetan. It's got the little cup. This is a bit of an inverted Tibetan, but it's still considered a Tibetan. Um, now, like anything, take these names with a grain of salt because I'm not 100% certain that's where they come from, if that makes sense. For many years, I thought Andy and Plying was named after the Andean people Turns out, no, some white chick or dude just decided to call it Andy Implying and the people in that region don't even do that. So I had no idea. And now we call it Chain Plying. So I'm not sure if these are from a Tibetan region and that's why they're naming the shapes. So I don't know, okay? I really just don't know. So I'm covering my bases. It's a bit of butt covering going on right here. Um, this is the Marja Crafts spindle set i was using that for a class so that one could probably be emptied off and and you know put away but that's the 20 grams with the with the marge craft spindle set you get multiple arms for different weights um so yeah and they are slower but that's also good for beginners as well um but you know you can get a good you can get some good speed up on it if you give it a good grip um, this is a Russian that I was spindling on as part of a demonstration, so I can empty that off now. So my favourite Russian spindle maker was a guy in the US called Jim Leslie, and he made the majority of my Russians. He has also passed on, so I cannot get them anymore, um, which is such a shame because they're such the most beautiful spindles to spindle on. Like he did this thing where it's a, a tapered tip and... Anyway, beautiful to spin. So, but yeah. Um, so there's that one. There's this one here that I'm spinning up some like ultra fine merino on. So this is it here. That's its bat. It's its project there. Um, there is a giant Turkish. I can't remember where I got that from. I actually think that's a Jim Leslie as well, personally, and I think that's why I got it to try. I don't like um, the ones. See this one, how it's got a very long shaft? I don't like that as much. I do prefer the shorter spindles. Um, and it comes down to personal preference. Again, people with longer arms or longer torsos, they may like the longer ones. Um not my favorite this one i got because it's fun it's a lair of the bearded dragon and it glows in the dark it doesn't spin great i won't lie to you it spins like a like a box but it's a tardis and it glows in the dark so what's the matter how it spins because that's not why i bought it <laughs> Then we have another Jim Leslie, which has got some bison on it. But see how it's got like the different types of laminated woods, which goes all the way up to about here. You can't see it, but this is a super short one. So like it's even shorter than that one. This is probably my favorite one. I like the shorter ones. Um, there is, this is another Turkish. I don't know where I got it from. It's probably got a tag somewhere. Um, that's a Russian walnut holly. Yeah, this is the Tibetan. Um, this is a Jim Leslie Tibetan. So it's got this like his little telltale tip here. It's so pointy. It's so nice. Um, so many Jim Leslie. <laughs> uh cherry fig maple russian that's this one <laughs> anyway and then going down into the depths here 
I don't know who I got this one from. It's actually got a lot of weight to it. Um, um, but it's sort of like a Russian style but without the cup, if that makes any sense. Um, I love this one. It's, it's quite weighty. This one's got a bit of linen, flax and merino on it. So and then this is called a glindle and it's got a glass blown tip. This is one I don't like using in my timber bowls if I can avoid it because I find that the glass, where is it? There was one, I used it in my Misty Bog Bowl. You could see that it's starting to scratch it up. Just a little, just enough that I noticed it. Um, <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Are you guys bored? You need to tell me if you're bored, okay, because I will pack it all up because I love these. This is why I can talk about them for hours. But if you're bored, you tell me and I will pack it up, okay. Um, this Glindle is from, what company was it? I can't remember. I have to, I'll find out. I don't know if they're still around. Um, but it's got some heath burnt into it because it's yeah it's just a very basic one but they can do all sorts of stuff in the glass um <laughs> uh, i guess it's a good thing a show is two hours it, it was better when she was live for six. Oh my gosh not bored good not bored i'm glad you aren't bored just checking i have to check this stuff every now and again because like all of us, when we talk about something we're super passionate about, sometimes we can ramble and the people around us are totally tuned out. And and I forget to check sometimes. Um, so let me know. Let me know. So I'll move the Glindor. This is a Minion. It's a little um, Bottom World Minion. Again, from Lair of the Bearded Dragon. I got this one because Abby wanted it, but then Abby didn't want it. So now I have it. So, and again, doesn't spin super fantastic, but it's enough. I mean, it's not supposed to spin there. It is. A, it's got a hook. It's supposed to top off. Um, so, yeah. So it is, it's a bit of fun as well. I like fun ones. I've got my super serious precious ones, and then I had some fun ones. Um this is one that Lara the Bearded Dragon made up for me. This was my old Fiberific logo. And this is on what they call a fang style. It's a little bit of a Russian, but not quite. Um, and this is great. This is some cashmere fling that I'm spinning up on that, um, which I haven't done in ages. I should probably do some more of that one. And this one here is um, another Lara of the Bearded Dragon fang with Ray and BB-8, and BB-8 glows in the dark, and it spins like a dream. So this one's like the cream. It does both. It spins beautifully, and it looks gorgeous. Look, it's got a little glowy, like a little glowy lightsaber. That glows in the dark. BB-8 glows in the dark. Like, how can I not love this? Seriously. Um, not bored. Learning something new for me is so good. That's good. Um... This bee needs a good beginner's sock pattern. Um, I recommend the rainbow sock pattern, but you can do it with just a self-striping yarn or a plain yarn. But it's a really good basic pattern. And there's some chick who did like a series of videos on it. Um, Knit Spin has the Shaun the Sheep one. Oh, my gosh. Um, we were talking about the Mayan spinning before. This is the Mayan spindle. Again, it may not be Mayan. Um, but it's got a really interesting motion because you feed this through here, right, and then you that's how you get it to spin. And when you want to apply, <coughs> you go the other way. Um, so, yeah. You didn't send me the pattern? No, you, you just grabbed the pattern off Ravelry. There was a link on your box. Um, the pattern's free. You just grab it off Ravelry. So, yeah, Misha made. So that's the Mayan spindle. And this is a little mini, a little mini Russian that I got for Christmas one year from Tim. 
And this one is on a bead. So it's like a DPN that has a big bead glued onto the end of it. That one's just a bit of fun. I don't know what that is. That's just a stick. That's a shawl pin and some handmade buttons. So that was what was in here. So I like handmade buttons because they just make them out of, like I've got friends who are, who are like make stuff out of timber and then they just smooth them down and they don't shape them too much and they just drill some holes in the middle. And every now and again, I'll get a little bag of handmade buttons. I hoard them. I'm hoarding them. And there we go. So that was what was in my basket. What are you? Also some more stitch markers. Oh, helpful. And that's some beeswax shea butter coconut oil from Spanish Peacock. That could be quite old. Oh, snips. Any in there? Yeah, look at that. Steps. Okay, <laughs> these stamps are so old. <coughs> They're 55 cent stamps. <laughs> oh my goodness. So uh, I'm laughing hard because stamps now are $1.10 each in Australia. So I would need to use two of these, which I should probably do. I did pay for them. So, you know, we'll put those over there. Anyway. Yeah. things away do you have any questions or want to see something more of something oh that was my Turkish my Turkish spindle that was little t-rex arms so yeah put you on your shaft so you don't get lost again Oh, I normally store my Turkish like this if I'm not using them. That way they can be stored flat. And also so I don't forget which arms go with which spindles. Um, I have a Deadpool fang from Lair of the Bearded Dragon. Awesome. He makes such the most beautiful spindles. I'd, I would say he is my favourite spindle maker in Australia. I do have some of his ones that are um, Turkish with the inlaid, um, with the, um, like, I've got a pink one. What's the pink gemstone? Not gemstone. Um, uh, Abby will kill me. I call them rocks. <laughs> She's like, it's not a rock. That one goes there. I'm going to pop these back in the crate because they take up lots of space. In the crate, you go in the crate. Okay, was that exciting? Was that thrilling? Get rid of all the dust. Move the mic things oh goodness me okay um i'm just having a quick look through the chat here let's go back up here for a second are you doing all right there little boy you're much happier out here aren't you um lots of suggestions for different heels and what have you Oh, no, Stella says, I abused my yarn swift this week as a skein winder and broke it. What is your favourite of both? Okay. Um, when it comes to swifts, like I use an umbrella swift that I just pick up off eBay. They're dirt cheap. Um, I normally pick them up in a pack of three, and when I kill them, they're dead and they're gone. I don't care. I personally don't like the metal ones. I like the little timber umbrella swifts. Um, sometimes I buy like a bulk amount of them and chuck them up on the web website, but they're just um, inexpensive sort of birch swifts. The oh, the other ones that I really like is the knit picks swifts and ball winder sets. Um, so and they're having a huge sale, so twenty percent off everything at knit picks, including 
their um, on sale stock, which I, I thought I'd just test it out to see if it works. Because you know what it's like. Normal, it's like everything's 20% off except for blah, blah, blah. Everything I put in the cart was reduced by 20%. So um, if some, Jackie, if you can grab the link from my Facebook page and throw that in. Their Swifts are really nice. Like their Umbrella Swifts are really nice. Thank you, Jackie. You were on it before I even said it. Um, their Umbrella Swifts are really nice and they're not so um, disposable. Like they're less likely to do what my cheapy ones from China do. So the Umbrella Swifts and when you say Swift and Skein Winder, are you talking about a ball winder? Because um, there's Swifts and Skeiners which are different styles of things that hold the skein. Um, and my other favourite is the Nancy's Knickknacks, but you can't get... I've got one unmotorised in a box here that I should probably sell. I don't need it because I've got a triple skein motorised version, um, but it just does a single skein. The Chowgu Tabletop Amish Swifts are nice. If you've got the space for a full tabletop skeiner. Um, for me, I don't have that kind of space, so I tend to use one that I can clamp to the end of the table. It lifts up higher, so it goes around all the crap that's on my table. Um, so, so not a ball winder. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, because I was going to say, those, those little $20 jobs from nitpicks, they're fine for the majority of ball winding. But, yeah, if you're talking about Swift's, um, I would definitely check out the Nancy's Nick, not Nancy's Nicknacks, the Swifts, like Umbrella Swifts, I would definitely be checking out Knit Picks, um, but like really pretty ones that last ages, they're good timber. If you want something a bit more disposable and a bit less, you care about it less, um, then you can hit eBay and buy one of the dodgy crap ones, which is what I've been doing, which I should stop and just get one of these Knit Picks ones. I keep looking at them and drooling. There's an ebony one I keep putting in my cart. Um, and um, for skeiners, like like proper hardcore skeiners, I would definitely be looking at um, Cheeky Monkey is probably a good one to look at. Um, normally I would say Nancy's Knickknacks, but they are closed. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if they're going to reopen. It's such a shame what's going on there. Um, yeah. But I would check the Skeiners. I would check Cheeky Monkey. They do a motorised version as well if that's what you need. Um, but they also do a non-motorised version too. Um, but, yeah, that's that's probably if you just want us, if it's just for an at-home scenario, ball winder, skein winder, hit nitpicks picks up. Um, Ruth, I'm so sorry to read that. Um, yeah. Allison, yes, they're closed. Um, so as a dealer, I have been given no more information than what is on the blog, which is that unfortunately the the young man who bought it from um, the Schroyers, um, he passed away really suddenly. Um, and when he passed away, he had all the information. So he'd been working for Bob for years and been making a lot of the componentry himself for years. And as he was quite young, only in his late 30s, um, he um, there was no succession plan. And so that information is gone. So we don't know what's going on. I'm a little concerned about some of my motorised equipment. Um, when the motors die, what happens? Because you could just buy more motors, but their website's totally closed at the moment. So um, it's been girl says, I, oops, I love my Margicraft scanner. Um, Margicraft now only do the wheel scanner. They no longer make a floor scanner. So unless you have a Margicraft wheel, I wouldn't suggest those. Um, yeah. Uh, so you're not keeping up with the comments. It's okay. Winding balls wide, my cheap. Yeah, I would. I just actually because my cheapy ones they use just um, jute. So I just grab some four ply and just tie them back together again. Alison says, I love my Nancy's. Me too. I um because when I'm ball winding, I find that the Nancy's knickknack swift is a bit too heavy for the ball winder. So I normally ball wind off like a off my little um birch skeiner. So 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to have a little drink here. Goodness me. So in a couple of weeks, guys, and I will mention it again before then, but there will be a short live stream. I've got some training that I'm going to be doing. Um, YouTube are putting on an Australian training day, which I'm like, wait, what now? And then I read it and I was like, Thursday. Oh, Thursday all day. Great. That's fantastic. It's not actually all day. It starts at, I think it's, and this is where it's confusing. I think it starts at midday Sydney time, which by then it'll be the first week of daylight savings. So um, I think I need to just do a short live stream from like 10 to like 10.50 or something like that. Just so I've got a few minutes to get ready and then jump into this training. Because um, I think it starts at 11 my time and then goes for most of the day. Um, but I will let you know when I know more. And I was just like, I'm sorry. Normally I, there would be nothing that would make me miss out on our live streams. But YouTube very rarely run like YouTube training. This is put on by YouTube. It's not just put on by somebody to give YouTube training. Otherwise, it would be just like, I got my live stream to do. Um, but, yes, yeah, so because YouTube are running it, that I've decided that I'm going to go that way with that. Um, so, yes. <clears throat> oh, I was looking for the rest of my sheep. I'm still missing my blue one. So I've got two browns and a yellow. I've also got a blue one. Oh, come back here. These are everyone Scott Snyder sends you an order, you get a little sheep. Um, here's your order. I've got to keep him away from Louie the Muncher. Oh, you're such a gentleman, Louie. I don't know if you guys can see this. Hang on, which way? I need to go this way. He's so much calmer being out here during live stream than it, when he is inside. Like when he's inside, he, I can just hear him like he's not crying as such, but he's barking and definitely trying to get attention. Um, Jen says, I've never used a Swift or a Winder. I've always done it by hand. I've hardly needed to so felt it was not a purchase for me fair enough fair enough if you buy a lot of like commercial balls and bullets then you've never really needed one i first needed a um needed one when i started spinning because when you spin your yarn on a spinning wheel um the very first thing that you use is a nitty knotty and um that's this weird sort of t t shape and l shape and you wind it into a, it's, it's witchcraft is what it is. Um, and you wind it and you get a skein. And because you've got to wind it off the bobbin and then wash it and then dry it and then you can use it. But you can't use it in a skein. So then you put it on a skein winder and you ball, ball it up. So I first started getting a skein winder back then. So that's why I had one. And it was well before I started buying my yarn in skeins. Um, Ashford has a ball winders and a scanner. They do now. Yes, I saw that. I had to, somebody contacted me a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that, because they wanted to know when Nancy's Knickknacks ball winders were coming back in stock. And I was just like, they're probably not, but for, I would suggest having a look at the Ashford because it was also about half the price. So I've never used it. And I said, well, I haven't used one, but it could be good. Uh, yeah, he was whimpering. Yeah, there was lots of sad noises coming out of the house. And then because Abby's at the vets this week, so um, she took him to work yesterday, so he came home so tired because um, he just plays all day with all the other dogs, well, when they're allowed out of their cages. Um, but he's just such a playful thing. And then he gets home and he passes out, and she was like, should, you, should I take him to work again because you're live streaming? I was like, no, I'll see how he goes in the shack. Well, I was a bit worried that he would like trash things and eat all my stuff and 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 all that kind of thing. Um, but he but he just passed out, really. I mean, I think he's just bored, so he's just sleeping. Um, but every time I move, he watches me, wants to see if I'm leaving. Um, Leanne says, that sounds great. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, even though you know lots of YouTube things we never stop learning, do we? We do not. Everything changes all the time in every aspect. 
So we're always constantly learning. Um, Jen says, I thought if I did a regular subscription box, I would need one, but so far I've not found a subscription box I'm happy with. It's a tough call. It's a tough call. As somebody who ran a subscription box for some time, um, it is definitely um, hard to make um, and make them so that everybody's happy. But I think some are just better than others as well. Um, does anybody have any subscription boxes that they recommend that Jen could have that maybe a look at? Um, Knit Spin Girl says, I have an Ashford Ball Winder. It can fit an entire Marge Craft Jumbo Bobbin onto it. That is awesome. That's pretty darn good right there. Because Jumbo Bobbins can take, like, an absolute crap ton of yarn. I think 200 grams I've put on Jumbo Bobbins. Um, I'm not a fan. I've got I've got one of their – well, actually, I don't. I think I've ditched it. Oh, no, there it is. It's over there. I've moved it. Um, I've got one of their um, Kiwi Swifts, and I don't like it because it doesn't clamp down or anything, and as you spin it, it taps. And it was really annoying. So I upgraded from the Kiwi to the to the Nancy's Knickknacks. That was a jump. That was a massive jump. But it's just sitting here getting zero love. Um, Alison says, don't have their electric ball winder, but do have their scanner, so I have to re-scan. I use that and then wind it onto my Nancy's. Game Widow says she only has one advent calendar left. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's so awesome. Um, will the Marja Craft fit on or So will the Marja Craft scanner fit on an Aura? Um I'm going to say I believe so, but I will get back to you. I can't imagine why it wouldn't because they do make all their flyers and everything interchangeable. Um, and but we but uh, I don't know 100% certain, but I, I will get back to you on that one. Knits Girl says she stuffs 300 grams on hers. Go you. Um, hey, two Arctic Wolves. Um, Ruth has said, on another note, I got an 8 millimeter red lace 69 centimeter knitting needles. Uh, 60. 60, not 69. Well, I'm glad you got what you needed. Um, there we go. Oh, excuse me. I need to top my tea up. It's getting cold, even on my little heat pad thing. I saw an ad for a cup of tea heat pad thing that actually has temperature control. And I was just like, really? Really? At like, how can you tell what kind of cup I've put on there that keeps, maybe it keeps the cup at that temperature, not the contents. Um, says on your site any of the, well then, because I've copied that from their site. So then there you go. Thank you. Because one of the things that Marja Craft have worked so hard at is to make sure that everything is interchangeable. And I think the only reason I wanted to double check is I know they've got a different, um, like the auras have got a different band system, a different dry band system, and they don't take all of the bobbins. Um, and that was my only concern. But, like, it would fit the screw, like, onto the bobbin, like, for, for, for putting it on. But I would still just, I'd like to just double check that because it could be slightly old information. Um, but I could imagine that it would be fine. But I would double check it. They're very behind at the moment. I've got orders that I put in in July that are still being shipped now. And and a part of it is because A, they, took, they take a little while. But B, they've been locked down two times in that period of time. They've had total lockdown where they haven't been able to have anybody in the workshops building things. And so that, they're, they're, you know, say, it's eight, say they say it takes eight weeks. It takes eight weeks, but that eight weeks is paused while they have a month in lockdown. And then they're back to work again. And then paused while they have another few weeks in lockdown. So, yeah, I'm just like, oh, my goodness, it's just taking such a long time. But, I mean, I get it. But every now and again, I look at the calendar and I'm just like, oh, my God, we're nearly at the end of September. Seriously. Like, 
I was I was looking at something and it was just like, um, what is a goal that you have that you want to achieve before 2022? And I was just like, um, what do I want to do before 2022? And then I jumped on and had a quick double check because I'm thinking, how many weeks do I have? And it was just like 14 weeks. I didn't have 14. Was it, it wasn't even 14. But I was just like, oh, my goodness. It was just insanity. I was like, I cannot believe that we are this far into the year. Two Arctic Wolves is listening and reading the comments, and I feel like I'm listening to a foreign language. Are you catching up on all the spindle stuff? So, yeah, because that was that was insanity. But I'll have to rename this one with a bit of spindle candy. So, yeah. Um, it is definitely, definitely a fun time. It's a fun time. So I'm just having a look here in the chat. Did you guys have any questions for me? John says that it's less than six months till his birthday. Oh, my goodness, John. Um, Marge Craft doesn't specify anything on their site. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I'm about 98% certain it'll work, but I would like to double check. I don't like to give people a bum steer and I would like to double check. Um, okay, the curve thingy with the holes that you were talking about last week, where does that go on your wheel? The Diz doesn't actually go on your wheel. It's a fiber. I'm assuming you're talking about the Diz, which was a little curved disc. I'll just move the question. A little curved disc with a couple of holes drilled in it. That doesn't actually go on your wheel. That is something that you do to prepare the fibre before you spin it on the wheel. Um, Jen says, we all have our go-to tools. I've become very picky. And you know what? When we we're all first learning, we just get whatever, right? We're like, whatever works, that'll do. And we jimmy things up and we're like, MacGyver this to make it do the different things. But as we expand our knowledge and expand our skill set, we realise, do you know what? Sometimes upgrading to a different style of tool saves time, energy, effort, and makes the whole process more enjoyable. And then you get rid of all the dross that you had before, either give it to another beginner or sometimes just go, no one should ever deal with this and burn it, which is what I did with some old dodgy made-in-China, got them off eBay um, bamboo knitting needles that were just made me think all bamboo was like that. I thought all bamboo was trash. Um, and, yeah, just now I'm like, okay, I want to have this thing and this thing and this thing. So, yeah, I definitely get it. Um, two after all says, I don't use any of the items you were talking about. I just crochet. That's awesome. So, so we can make the yarn and you can use the yarn because I'll tell you right now, as a yarn crafter, like spinner and, and well, ex dyer now, but spinner and maker of yarn and user of yarn, they are separate crafts. I've got entire crate of hand spun yarn that I just haven't used because I use commercial yarn for my other yarn crafting. So um, creative man says, okay, th then you're going to explain the Diz thing. <laughs> okay. So we did explain the Diz thing a little bit last week and there is a whole video on me using the Diz. I dizzed um, a bat, so which is like a... a, a a fibre preparation which runs through a drum carter. Um, it is definitely, um, it's it's just a way to prepare the fibre. So you can go and check out um, the Diz a Bat video, which um, if you just, once this, once we're finished here, if you just jump onto the Fibre Effect channel and just type Diz a Bat, it'll come up. And it's just a little standalone video exactly on that. Um, Pearly Shaw says, so funny, I've been thinking about what to do with my dodgy bamboo needles once my chow goo set order arrives. They worked really well as kindling in a barbecue. Um, but you can you can give them to a local charity shop if you want. But if you found that they were difficult to use, then don't give them to a charity shop because they get enough crap. Um, sometimes things just deserve to be 
gotten rid of. Um, Oh, Knit Spin Girl says, I thought I had two tubs of hair spun yarn. I just found a third one yesterday. I've done a massive clean out of the craft room and I've got two massive black tubs of unspun fibre, but only one tub of actually spun yarn. So chopsticks, I like good chopsticks as well. So I wouldn't use it as chopsticks. It's personal preference personal preference on what we like to use and what we like to do. Not all tools are worthy of being kept. Honestly, sometimes bad tools are just bad tools. Um, so it's, you know, it's one of those things. Sometimes a bad tool is just that. It's just a bad tool and you just don't need it. And nobody else needs it either. Um, <laughs> Chintamani says, I've done... Lots of quarter done spinning products, projects, and bugger all finished yarn. Oh my goodness. Yes, you saw my spindles. Half of them have got stuff loaded on them. My spinning wheel has got stuff here, and there's bobbins that I pulled off to do that one that are still unfinished. Oh. Um, Rebecca says, I just picked up a new project bag and a sock set in full colors. That sounds really nice, Rebecca. Um, Stella says, I made a cheap bamboo crochet hooks as an evil Santa gift last year and they were stolen around the table a few times. Oh, that sounds fun too. Um, Jen says that where she lives, there's things that you can try before you buy. I'm not going to say it out loud because it's one of those words that YouTube's not a fan of. Um, why can't it be like that with crafting tools? I know, honestly, it is it is bizarre. Like for me, I'm an online store and that's the problem. But there's a lot of actual like bricks and mortar stores that you can't just sit and trial it. Like that does do my head in a little bit. And luckily you can usually like buy one before you buy the set. And like I say in the Chagu video, um, buy the one that you either use tons or is not included in the set. Um but, yeah, it's definitely just, it is frustrating because, like, even if we just narrow it down to crochet hooks, right, like just thinking about crochet hooks, how many different types of crochet hooks do you know of? Like just brands. Like off the top of my head, I'm sure I know 10 at least. And then there's the non-branded ones that are sometimes not as crappy as some of their other non-branded counterparts. It is insane. And, yeah, I just, it's just insanity. And it's a hook. You can wipe it down with a sterilisate. Like, you can sterilise it. Like, who these days in this current climate does not have some sort of antibacterial wipe in their store? or like you know making people use hand sanitizer like i don't know what it's like in the rest of the world in australia you walk into stores and you hand sanitize and you know and they're wipe, still wiping everything down so how can why can they not do that with a crochet hook it's not like you're going to suck on it or put it in your hair or or you know carry it around behind your ear you're going to have a go with it decide if you like it and then go no can i try this other one you're allowed to try jewelry on why can't you try out a hook? Anyway, sorry. Have to rant about something in a, in a live stream, don't we? Isn't that how we do things now? Um, bamboo knitting needles are okay depending on what size they are. DPNs tend to split on me. Um, look, I'm, I'm going to preface this by saying bamboo is not my favourite. I definitely prefer stainless steel. Um, and definitely when it comes to DPNs, I do not use bamboo DPNs. Um, but when it comes to the straights, I thought all bamboo was coarse. I thought it was all just that little bit, a um, little bit, you know, rough. And so it's snaggy yarn and things like that. And I assumed that's what all bamboo was like. And then I got in some bamboo straight needles for somebody who wanted them. And I wasn't even stocking any chowgu bamboo at the start. I was like, I hate bamboo. I'm not getting it in. I'm just going to get this stainless steel in. And then I, I used one for a video because it was like I needed a particular size, didn't have it in a circular 
um, and couldn't find my set because it disappears all the time. And I had to use a bamboo straight. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is nothing, like nothing like the other bamboo I'd used, like nothing like it. And so, yeah, it's when I realised that all bamboo is not created equal. So, and that that that's all the, for all the things. Um, I went to the Granny Square in Katoomba and they actually let me hold all the crochet hooks, not use, and I ended up with the poopy gold clovers, loved them and got all of the sizes. I know that I've gotten to hold the hooks at Mean Mother's Creations in Bean Lee. Um, they've let me hold a hook. And I even got to, because they have like a crochet project corner where they're making stuff for charity and it was a scarf or something, and I was able just to have a go with it. Um, and they did. They just wiped it down and put it back in the packaging. Um, no, oh, no, no, I decided to buy that one, so I kept it. So did I – no, not sucking hair, but sucking on a hook. Like it's not like someone's doing something gross with it. They're holding it in their hand and they're crocheting it, you know. It's no worse than going somewhere and reading the magazine that someone else has already read. Um and several too, several rants in this live. I mean, last week was pretty hardcore ranting. So, you know, this week I'm trying to calm it back a little. Um, yeah, Kirby, you're 100% right. Even the quality of the generic brands can vary greatly from bad to great. Absolutely. Just because it's non-branded doesn't necessarily make it bad. It just makes it harder to work out if it was the good one you remember or not. Um, yeah. Yeah. Game Widow says, I've got a set of the Chow Goo Bamboo 2.25 millimetres. I think that is the O size off the top of my head. Um, and, yeah, surprised at how robust they were. Absolutely. Um, personally, bamboo is only good for cutting boards because it's antibacterial by itself. That's pretty much it, by my opinion. I don't like any kind of timber cutting board because I can't get near and scrub them enough. I'm so funny with cutting boards. I'm just like, dude, I've got to be able to scrub this thing hard. Um, Leanne can recall heaps of brands, but it didn't take long to find her forever hooks. I just don't look at other hooks anymore. But that's the thing. Once you find the ones that you love, you don't keep looking. It's like me with the knitting needles, right? I fell in love with Chow Goo. Then the Zings came out and the Likes and, like, all these other ones came out. I don't even try them because I'm happy with the chow goo. And so I don't need, like, there's nothing about them that I'm like, oh, man, I wish they didn't do this. Otherwise, I would be continuing to look for the, the next thing, and that's how I felt with the crochet hooks as well. Um, I, I I personally started off with just the bare metal hooks. Um, I think I had a boy set, B-O-Y-E. And they were great, except I was having some problems with my wrist because I was crocheting for Jenny King Designs. I was crocheting for 12 and 13 hours a day every day. And so um, not 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 full time, but like it would be spasmodic. So I would have a project, I would need to get it done in a certain amount of time and get it back to her. And I was finding I was getting like, you know, like I was gotten to the point where I couldn't grip with my hand and things like that. And and um, I ended up getting a, a hook with a handle on it. I think it was a poopy gold, the clover soft touches. I call them poopy gold. Sorry if you're new here. I call the clover top soft touch poopy golds. Anyway, it was one of those, and that helped me get through a project that I was working on. So I still have a three mil poopy gold. But then I found, my husband found, um, he went and spoke to a yarn store because it was my birthday coming up, and he got me a tulip set with the squishy, you know, the, the brown ones with the grey squish, and they were great. And then but as they've deteriorated over time, because they are like 10 years old, um, I'm now onto the clover and moors, which I also love. So, yeah. And, and for me, it's... I interchange between the tulips and the clovers, no problems, like the clover and moors. That, to me, they're nearly, they're very similar in my hand. Um, there are slight differences, but not much. Um, Freaky says that I got five and a spin from Paradise Fibers, and I'm seeing why we need more than one spindle for spinning. Yes. Yeah, because it's they fill up pretty quick. Um our local shop has a case full of hooks for you to try before you buy. That's awesome. Um, Jen says, I have my forever hooks now. It took me a few years. Um, thought to try something new, hated it. Now I have two sets of my forever hooks. Absolutely. Um, yeah, he did. He moved. 
Oh, he's still sleeping though. Are you sleepy boy? <laughs> um, I was talking to him and he couldn't see him. His little eyes open. Louis, what are you doing? Like I'm snoozing, Mum. Bugger off. Um, yep, Louis rolling around on the couch. Yep. I just, I just thought it would be nicer for him to be out here with us. And, you know, I'm going to let it. He's been in here asleep for two hours. I'm sure the little muppet is going to definitely need a, um, a run very soon. He's going to need to go and burn off some energy. What happens is he goes out for a walk with my husband in the morning at dumb o'clock in the morning. And if my husband doesn't take him, he barks the entire time he's out. So I'm up at stupid o'clock because Tim's gone for a walk. So now Tim takes him most mornings, which is good. Um, but they come back from their walk, like, just before my alarm's about to go off to get up. And um, Louis just, like, bounds up onto the bed, like, Vroom! and just runs up and tries to eat your hair. So we call him Joe Bailey in the morning. We're like, we don't need your help, Joe Bailey, which is an Australian hair, like a hair designer. Um, so, yeah, it's just he does that in the mornings and then he runs around like a loon and then he passes out inside for a few hours. So this is his passing out phase and uh, and then he's going to probably go insane. Um, he has been very well behaved. I might have to give him a treat when we go inside, give him a little dentist stick or some sort of schmackos. Would that make his ears twitch? No, nothing's going to make his ears twitch. Well, my lovely friends, it is time, and I could keep talking because you know I can, but it's time for us to move on with our day or night and go and do some do something else, some yarn crafting, and just get up and stretch. And, oh, no, I don't give him Tim Tams because he, they've got chocolate, and chocolate's bad for dogs. That's definitely the only reason why I don't share Tim Tams. Um, and, yeah, so I'm going to catch you all next time, next week. Next week is a normal length. Let me just, yeah, next week is the normal length. The week after is the one that will be short. So next week is normal. Um, the week after will be short, okay? So I'll see you all then. You be good. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.